Hey everyone, Brett Kelly here for another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives. Um, so last week, or sorry, I guess maybe not last week. Anyway, the last Houston video we put out, we were talking about how you take a fresh Ubuntu and Houston machine, uh, build a Z pool, create a Samba Share Connect, all that fun stuff. Anyway, we got some great comments on that video, and in particular, uh, Brian Polak asked us, um, thanks for the video. Now, can we see how to switch an existing unit running FreeNAS? For example, move the pools, scheduled snapshot tasks, remote replication tasks, etc., over to Houston running Ubuntu? That's a great question, Brian. Um, my initial thought was, great, let's get on and I'll do the whole switch over. But um, as I kind of planned it out, I realized that was going to be a relatively lengthy video. So we said, let's break it up into chunks. So today I'm introing the first part of our three part series. We're going to overall do exactly what Brian asked. We are going to talk about alerts and monitoring. We're going to talk about our automated snapshots and replication tasks, how you do that, how you move and import the zpool into FreeNAS. And um, yeah, we're going to do that over three weeks. So this week, I'm talking about alerts and monitoring in Houston. Next week, I'm going to talk about automated uh, snapshots and replication tasks. And then in the third week, we're going to put it all together. I'm going to start with a fr uh, a free NAS machine with all that set up, um, and we're going to move over to Ubuntu. Don't worry, we won't do the whole OS install, but uh, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be fun. So uh, with that out of the way, um, let's start on our first video. Oh, I have to mention too, Daniel, Daniel Rippon on that same video commented, and I'm sure a lot of Windows admins are, rolled their eyes when they saw this. Uh, Brett, thanks for the video. Very interesting. Uh, you shouldn't use .local domains in your AD, though. Those are reserved for MDNS applications, shouldn't be used with DNS. A suggestion would be local domain. Anyway, Daniel, thank you. Of course, right after I set ours up a bit ago, I realized this. Luckily for our little test environment, it doesn't cause any issues, so I kind of left it the way it is, but I, I, I cringe every time I write .local. Anyway, um, thanks for the heads up. Okay, so with that big intro of what we're doing over the next little bit out of the way, let me talk to you about what I'm doing today. I'm talking about monitoring alerting. We're going to install it, configure it. We're going to fail a drive in our zpool, fail a drive in our, that hurt, into our mirrored boot drives, and um, verify we got our email. Because if you're not getting told something's wrong about your server, well, that's not going to work. So uh, I'll kind of talk about the pieces that go into it as we go through it, but... Um, Let's uh, hop over to the screen and get started. So, we're looking at the homepage of Houston right now, our overview. So, my system's up to date, everything's great. So, we are going to hop over, hop over to the terminal. Um, change the color because I like this one better. And we're going to download our tools here. So I'm just going to pull this down from our GitHub. Um, and don't worry, we'll put the link in the description of reading a little more about what's going on here. I'm trying to remember a URL off the top of my head, which I'm pretty proud that I just did that. Yes. Um, OK, so monitoring stack. So before I deploy these things, we're using uh, four kind of pieces of technology here to achieve this whole thing. Some of you may be familiar with these before. We actually use this in the Ceph stack, or sorry, the Ceph team um, uses this, and we loved what they did, so we've kind of poured it out to work with everything. We're using Prometheus, Alert Manager, Grafana, and a Node Exporter. So, there's a lot of words real quick. All you need to know is the Node Exporter gathers the information, Prometheus stores it in a database, Alert Manager tells you when something's wrong, Grafana shows you all kinds of pretty graphs. Um, going deeper into all that, that's a subject for another video. If you guys are inter interested, let me know. But long and short of it is you get an incredibly flexible, modern uh, alerting system. So, well, let's all look at it. So, let's, uh, let's run the thing. So, I'm going to run this init script first, set my variables up. Um, I'm going to go in. We are deploying with Ansible here. Sorry, I, I didn't mention that. Um, so all you need to do, we've built this up so it's plug and play as much as possible, as in you need to give it your email server settings 
and it'll handle the rest. Um, as always with Ansible and other things, you can do much more advanced things, but we've set it up to be as easy as possible out of the box. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to add my email servers, uh, server. Um, sorry if you see some blurred out stuff. My IT team would get really mad at me if I showed you some of our internal stuff. Um, I'm going to send the email from myself to myself for our demonstration here. Um, sorry, I'm just going to type all this stuff in and I'll show you what the variables represent in a second here. And I don't need a second, I'm only going to send it to myself, so I only need one email for now. So, for those watching at home, what do you need to know? You need to know the host name or IP of your email server. You need to know the SMTP port of your email server. You need to give it a send email. That's who sends the alert emails. And you need to give it a receive email. And you can give it a number of people. So say you've got multiple groups that need to receive this. OK. So with that out of the way, let's, um, let's run it. Oh, look at that. I don't have Ansible installed. Bear with me for a second, guys. As you can tell, I did all kinds of prep work here. But this is common. This is what some people will get out of the box. No Ansible. So good. We'll do a, a, a real setup. Um, OK. So that's done. I'm going to clear that out. Ansible is installed. So. Like everything with Ansible, it does it over SSH, and it wants to be able to SSH without um, passwords. So we're going to generate a RSA key here. So you just run SSH key gen, and you just say yes to everything. And then we're going to copy that. We're going to copy that key to ourself. So we're just going to copy it to localhost. It's going to ask me that. I'm going to put in my password, and we're done. So let's make sure that worked. We're going to ping my Ansible hosts um, all. There we go. So a success. All right. So Ansible is configured. If you guys want a little deeper look into what's going on with all that Ansible stuff, I know I did kind of go quick. We have a video um, deeper in our channel where I kind of go over what you need to know to use Ansible, not necessarily make Ansible playbooks, just how to use it. So check that out if you want to see a little more detail. So we are going to deploy our monitoring. So remember, all I did was add the email setting servers. Or I can't speak today. All I did was put in my email settings, like my server host name, who's sending me my email, who's receiving the emails. Anyway, so let's run. So what this playbook is going to do, as I'll give it some color as it's running here, it's going to install the Node Exporter. Node Exporter is a tool written by the Prometheus team that uh, or gathers and produces, no, nah, not produces, uh, makes available a bunch of stats about your system. Um, it's going to deploy Prometheus, which is a time series database that's going to scrape all that data Node Exporter gives out, stores it in its database, that we can query it for either making metrics or making alerts. It's then going to install Alert Manager, which is another tool, part of the Prometheus team, which reads and queries the, the um, uh, information that's being stored in Prometheus and fires emails accordingly. And then finally, it's going to install Grafana with some pre-made uh, dashboards that give you insight about your Z pool and the overall state of your machine. Um, all those tools are free and open source, incredibly powerful. Actually, a little fun fact, Prometheus, uh, so Prometheus Alert Manager and Node Exporter are all done by Prometheus. Grafana is a separate team. Um, but Prometheus was created by uh, SoundCloud. So everyone, I think everyone knows what SoundCloud is. But uh, yeah, thanks, SoundCloud, for giving the world these wonderful tools. So um, we're done installing. And uh, everything is up. The last little fun thing to show you is it actually installs all these as containers. Um, it's a very easy, clean way to install them. They're lightweight. And um, well, you just saw how fast that installation was. If you're familiar with Zabex or Nagios, 
this stack gives you very similar functionality. It's just, well, you saw how easy that is to install. So I'm not, well, actually that itself is a topic for another day. Zabbix, Nagios, Prometheus, what's the best alerting? Well, that completely depends. I love this stack, but anyway, that actually gives me an idea for another video. So I'm going to put that aside for now. Okay, so with all our services installed here, remember, like I said, we wanted to make this as plug and play out of the box as possible. This Prometheus Grafana, I'm just going to call it the monitoring stack, um, is incredibly powerful, but like anything incredibly powerful in open source, usually that means you got to fiddle with it to make it work. So we have made this playbook that I just installed as plug and play as possible. So it opened the firewalls, all the firewall rules for us, and it um, comes preloaded with, with alerting rules for the kind of the bare minimum, right? Like you need to be told when your Z pool's in trouble, you need to be told if your OS rate is in trouble. You can add other rules, but that's what comes included out of the box right now. So let's test it out. Um, I'm gonna go to the ZFS file sharing. So here's a tank I made. So like I said, the universal test name of a Z pool is tank. Um, those who know, know. Uh, I'm gonna jump over to status. I'm just gonna pick one of my devices here and I'm gonna offline the disk. So by me offlining the disk was enough for tank to be degraded. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go MD ADM, uh, detail dev MD1. So this is one of my boot drives. So great, I'm going to fail one of these drives. So I'm gonna simulate as if, I don't know, cable broke, drive broke, something happened, right? You wanna be notified about that. Like everything, it'll, the server will continue to work because we've got redundancy, but again, you want to be told. So uh, I'm going to run, I'm going to, I'm actually going to check my history because no, it's not in my history. MDADM, uh, the device I want to manage. Excuse me, guys. This is what happens when you go off the top of your head. So we're going to mark it faulty first. Dev SDB3. Okay, so that should be enough to trigger that. Yeah, so. As far as this is concerned right now, a disk is faulty. It just failed out of the RAID. So that's enough to trigger the rule for my boot drives. That's enough to trigger my rule for my degraded Z pool that I saw over here. So if we go over to um, my email, and again, don't feel offended we blurred half of this out because my IT team would scream at me for showing people things. Um, we got our first email here about our Z pool degraded state. And uh, as you can read, you get told clearly that your zpool is in a degraded state. It tells you which host it's on. It tells you which zpool name it failed and gives you a little more description. Zpool tank has experienced a failure, but it's still functioning. The fault tolerance of the pool might be compromised as a subsequent failure fault in another device might be unrecoverable. So attention is required. It's in a degraded state. Like I said, thing keeps working because that's how RAID works, but you're told so you can go do something about it. Uh, let's refresh my emails again and see our second one. Perfect. And then here's my other email alert, or my other email alert telling me that my boot drive has failed. So same host RAID disk failure, device is MD1, tells the host it's on, same message. At least one device in an MD80 RAID, MD80 M RAID on Saf Ubuntu 2 has failed. Oh, don't mind the name Saf. I was doing other things with these servers earlier. Um, array MD1 needs attention and possibly a disk replacement. So, not only is it important that you're told something's wrong, we should be pretty clear about what's wrong when you're told about it. So, um, you can go and back, uh, when you get these, you can deal with that, whether that it's through 45 drive support or yourself. Either way, you can sleep. Um, peace of mind that you will be notified if something goes wrong. By default, this thing will repeat every hour if you don't deal with it. Um, that everything, as always, is configurable, but that's what's there by default. Um, and uh, I think that's it, guys. I, actually, you know what? Um, yeah, that's it. There's nothing more to do here. Uh, what one would do here is someone would go back in and fix your array. Sorry, I have to remove it. So just what I'm doing is putting out everything back together. And in this case, this is just offline, but if you were had a failed disk, at this point you would go to your server, you would go find one three in your server, you would take it out, you'd plug a new one in, you'd hit replace disk, 
the new disk would show up in here. You click that, you add it in, you're done. In my case, I just offlined it, so I'm going to online to the disk again. Our degraded state goes away, and then your alerts would stop coming in because you've cleared the alert out. So that is how alerting is done with Houston and uh, Ubuntu, and as well as CentOS and soon to be Rocky. Um, all right, so that was a quick run through of how to install, configure, and test your email alerts um, with your Houston managed system. Um, I did emails. We're also able to notify through Slack, through SMS text, through PagerDuty, GenieOps. I don't know, there's a lot of things on the list, but more often than not, we see Slack, email, um, a couple others. Anyway, that's really cool. Like everything with all these open source tools, you can do so much stuff with this. We have made it so it functions how you need it out of the box. But if you can dream big, we can help you out with that. So um, with that said, I think we'll leave it here with the alerting and monitoring. Remember, next week, we're going to talk about automated snapshots, automated replication tasks. And the week after that, we're going to put it all together and move from FreeNAS to Houston. Yeah, so uh, well, before I go, I want to show you guys something really cool. I kind of hinted towards it because I was wearing my sweater today. But uh, if you navigate to uh, rockylinux.org and scroll down to the bottom there, you can see your good old friend 45 drives. We, I might have mentioned this before through one of our channels, but we are officially a uh, principal sponsor of Rocky Linux. Um, so we figured this was the best way we could help. And uh, I can't wait to get my hands on what they've been working on. And I'm sure most of the world feels that way too. So. Uh, more content to be coming out there. So, as always, hope you guys enjoyed that. See you next week.